And the Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camels stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes. Tonight's guest, Mr. Alan Ladd, and starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Why am I rich? I'm rich. What do you mean? Who am I? I'm a millionaire. Calm down, Costello. What's this yelling all about? What do you mean you're a millionaire? Well, it's true, Abbott. My Uncle Oscar just died and left me all his money in his will. You mean you're his uh, beneficiary? Yeah, because... Who's what? Their yeah, beneficiary. Beneficiary is the man who gets the money. Benny Fisher ain't gonna get none of this money. No. <laughs> My uncle left the door to me, Abbott. How did Benny Fisher get into this deal? I'll take him to court. I'll sue him. Costello, will you be quiet? Beneficiary means that you, uh, you are your uncle's heir. My uncle's what? Y- your uncle's heir. Heir. H-E-I-R. My uncle didn't have any H-E-I-R. He was bald-headed. All right. <laughs> All he had was a mustache. So what? Well, my uncle was very proud of that mustache. Every morning, he used to cover it with toothpaste. So why did he cover his mustache with toothpaste? Well, so he could kiss his wife. Toothpaste. <laughs> toothpaste. I mean toothpaste. Why did he do that? You have your S teeth in, haven't yes, you? Yes, yes. I brought them along with me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will start back again. Why uh, did he, he used cover to his cover mustache? It with toothpaste. Toothpaste. Now, let's have it. Go ahead. Why did he cover his mustache with toothpaste? Yes. So he could kiss his wife goodbye and brush her teeth at the same time. Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now, this whole thing is ridiculous. For one thing, how do you know your uncle left this money? Oh, I just got this telegram from my uncle's lawyer. I'm going to read it. Go ahead, Dear read Dear Lou Costello, your uncle Oscar has just died and left you a million. Thanks for your past favors. How do you like that, Abbott? I'm rich. I'm going to take everybody out and buy them a multi-milk. A multi-milk? Yeah, because I'm a multi-millionaire. Ma! Oh. <laughs> Don't be crazy. By the way, Costello, you never told me about your Uncle Oscar. Where, where did your uncle live, Costello? Oh, he lived in England. Everybody knew my Uncle Oscar in England. He used to walk around with a pocket full of shillings. Shillings? No pence? Sure he had pence. What do you think he did, walk around in his underwear? Oh, <laughs> oh never mind. Forget your uncle's underwear, please. <laughs> Oh, well, don't you think it'd be a little drafty? Now, look, Costello, now that you're, you've inherited a million, million dollars, what are you going to do with all that money? Well, I'm going to use half of the money to buy bonds. Swell. That's what everybody should do. That's swell. And then with the other half, I'm going to buy a radio station. That's uh, You're going to buy a radio station? Yeah. You don't know anything about radio. Why, you don't even know uh, who discovered electricity. I do, too. Mrs. Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity. Mrs. Benjamin Franklin? You mean Benjamin Franklin? No, Mrs. Benjamin Franklin. One day, she and her husband had an argument, and she said, Benjamin, go fly a kite. Oh. <laughs> All right, that's enough, Costello. This whole thing is ridiculous. Well, hello, fellas. Oh, it's Ken Niles. Say, bud, what's that fat boy looking so happy about? He looks like the cat that just swallowed a mouse. If I was a cat, you're one rat that wouldn't be. A running around loose. All right. <laughs> Costello... <laughs> Costello just got some good news, Ken. His uncle left him a million dollars, and he is going to buy a radio station. And what's more, Niles, I'm going to be the head announcer on my program. You're going to be the head announcer? <laughs> Costello, you can't become a head announcer overnight. Well, I've been hammering away for years to be a head announcer. You look like a hammerhead. <laughs> now, quiet, Costello. Niles is right. An announcer must have an education. Y- you can't even read or write. Well, maybe not, but I but I spell. You certainly do. <laughs> I said spell. <laughs> Everybody's reading wrong. Now go ahead. You give me any word at all, and I'll spell it. Okay, spell uh, Mississippi. State or river? Uh, river, 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 river. Huh? River, river. Yeah. R I V E R. River. <laughs> Come on, Costello, don't try to crawl out of it. Spell Mississippi. Okay, Mississippi. Yes. M-I, ping, S-S-I, ping, S-S-I, ping, P-P-I, ping. Uh, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. What's, what's the ping for? I was dotting the ice. Oh. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is the silliest thing I ever heard of. Why, Costello, my lovely wife would make a better announcer than you would. Your lovely wife? That old umbrella had her face lifted so many times, she's too tall for the microphone. 
Oh, I heard that remark, Costello. And I want you to know that I have never had my face lifted. They started to lift it, but when they saw what was underneath, they dropped it again. <laughs> You must excuse Costello today, Mrs. Niles. He's all excited. He just inherited a million dollars, and he's buying himself a radio station. Oh, that sounds just like him, the stingy, fat plutocrat. He wouldn't think of buying anything for his friends. I wouldn't say that, Mrs. Niles. I'm going to buy you a lovely present, a nice red fire extinguisher that will last you a hundred years. Oh, I don't expect to be here for a hundred years. That's all right. Where you're going, you can take it with you. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Costello. The nicest present you could give Mrs. Niles is a chance to try out for that announcing job on your new station. Now, why not have a little contest to see who is the fastest reader? That's right, Costello. After all, it's speed that counts in announcing. And my lovely wife and I challenge you to a contest. Now, that's fair enough. All right. Mrs. Niles, you will be uh, number one. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Abbott. And I shall certainly do my best to win this contest fairly and conduct myself as a lady. That's splendid, Mrs. Niles. Now, Ken, you're number two. Thank you very much, Bud. And I certainly can do my best to win this contest fairly and conduct myself as a gentleman. Good, good. And now, Costello, you will be number three. Uh, thank you, Mr. Abbott, because I don't know how to get some of my progress in my announcer, too. Ah! Uh, now, now, now. I didn't understand what you said, Costello. Well, did you hear what the other said? Yes. <laughs> All right, now, let's go. Uh, you will each recite, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now, when I call your name, you start. When you hear the bell, you stop. And don't forget to take a great, big, deep breath. All ready now? Mary Had a Little Lamb! No, no, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll call out the name. Not you. No, okay. not you. All right. Mrs. Niles. <gasps> Mary Had a Little Lamb. Please spice stone. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb is sure to go. I followed her to school one day. To... Uh, Ken Niles. Mary had a little lamb, please white as snow, and everywhere the Mary went, the lamb matured to go. Followed her to school one day, which was uh, Luke Costello. <laughs> Mrs. Niles. I didn't have nothing to say yet. Mrs. Niles. Mary had a little lamb, please as white as snow, and everywhere the Mary went, the lamb matured to go. Followed her to school one day, which was Luke. Uh, Ken Niles. <laughs> Mary had a little lamb, please as white as snow, and everywhere the Mary went, the lamb matured to go. Followed her to school one day. Uh, Luke Costello. <laughs> Mrs. Niles. Mary had a little lamb, please as white as snow, and everywhere the Mary went, the lamb matured to go. Uh, Ken Niles. Mary had a little lamb, face as white as snow, and everywhere the Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Lou Costello. <laughs> the winner, Lou Costello. Why, that's the most amazing thing I've ever heard. Oh, it's astounding. Costello, how did you ever learn to talk that fast? Oh, it's easy. I've got two tongues. <laughs> You've got two tongues? Yeah, I got my own, and my father gave me his. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why would your father give you his tongue? Because my mother never gave him a chance to use it. Ah, <laughs> Closest to our major bases to Japan is Dutch Harbor on Unalaska Island in the Aleutians. To Americans at Dutch Harbor, to United States bases and outposts throughout the world, go camel cigarettes. By the million, by the ton. For camels are first with men in all the services according to actual sales records. And of course, fresh camels in the Aleutians mean fresh camels for you too. Yes, your camel cigarettes stay fresh, cool smoking and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. Today, more people want camels, both at home and overseas. More people want the fresh cigarette, the cigarette with more flavor. So remember, if your store is sold out, Camel cigarettes are worth asking for again. A-M-E-L-S. Camel cigarettes. Camel standard of costlier tobaccos is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. <laughs> Connie Haynes sings the California novelty tune, San Fernando Valley. Oh, I'm packing my grip, and I'm leaving today, cause I'm taking a trip, California way, I'm gonna set down a nevermore road, and make the San Fernando Valley my home, I'll forget my sins, I'll be making new friends, where the west begins, and the sunset ends, cause I've decided where you truly should be. And it's the San Fernando Valley for me I think that I'm safe and Satan He will be waiting When my lonely journey is done And kindly old Reverend Thomas Made us a promise 
He will make the two of us one So I'm hitting the trail To the cow country You can forward my mail Care of RFD I'm gonna settle down And never more roam And make the San Fernando Valley My home I think that I'm safe and thinking He will be waiting When my lonely journey Make the two of us one. I'm in the trail to the cow country. You can forward my mail, care of RFD. I'm gonna settle down and never more roam and make the San Fernando Valley my home. Come in, come in. Uh, pardon me, is this the radio station? Yeah, this is station IOU, the voice of the creditors. I'm the owner and manager, Lou Costello, the great big fat radio maggot. Uh, my name, my name is Pentley P. Krinkelmeyer of Krinkelmeyer and Ingersoll. Uh, where's Ingersoll? He's doing time. <laughs> I'm thinking of buying a program on your station. I'm in the cracker business. Ha, ha, ha. You look like the crummy type. <laughs> Costello, take it easy. You need the business. Yes, Mr. Costello. You see, I'm a very successful man. I manufacture Crinkle Myers crispy, crunchy, crackly, crinkly, crinkly, crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. I make biscuits. And you do it the hard way, too. Quiet, quiet, Costello. What kind of a program did you wish to put on, Mr. Crinkle Meyer? I want a program that will sell Crinkle Myers crunchy, crunchy, crinkly, crackly, crookly, crackly, crinkly, crackly, crookly, crackly. You want to sell biscuits? Young man, you took the words right out of my mouth. You mean I took the biscuits right out of your pan? That's it, young man. You make the cracks and I'll make the crackers. Ha, ha, ha! And now I'd like to have you meet a young chap who's going to help put on my program. Meet my announcer, Oliver Storty. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Hello. This guy's a radio announcer? Well, I suppose you like your own announcers, but I thought you might like to put one more on. And he's the moron who can do it, too. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. All right, all right. Let the, let the boy read something for us, Costello. Go ahead. Let him read something. Oh, yeah, I'm marvelous. <laughs> Wonderful. Simply marvelous. Now, get a load of this. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Hello. This is Oliver Store Cheese bringing you the Crinklemeyer Crinklemeyer Crack, Cracker Program from ha, 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 Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just been listening to a coast-to-coast hiccup. <laughs> oh, so that's the way it is Come, Oliver We'll take our business elsewhere Ha, ha, ha Ha, ha, ha Ha, ha, ha All right, all right <laughs> Costello, listen That's no way to run a radio station You're chasing all the customers away All right, all right, all right Just a minute, I'll open the door Never mind, I'll walk through it Costello, Costello, look who it is, that famous killer, Alan Ladd. Hey, which one of you fellas is Costello? It's, uh, 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 Cost- uh, uh, the little fat one, me, I'm Costello. Oh, uh, you, huh? Listen, fatty, I understand you just inherited a million dollars. It's all right. You got me. Go ahead. Take my money. Pull out your gun. Go ahead. Shoot me full of holes. Go on. Make me look like Swiss cheese. Go ahead. Hey, wait a minute. What are you talking about? I don't even carry a gun. Oh, gun is too noisy, eh? You got a knife. Mm-hmm. Got a knife, huh? Go ahead. Do something to me. Go on, stab me. Cut me to ribbons. I got a, I got on clean underwear. I'm ready to die. Costello, Alan Ladd doesn't want to kill you. If he does, I'll never talk to him again. Oh, look, I don't want you to die. I, I hope you live to be 150 years old. Oh, you want me to be an old man, 150 years old, with a beard? I'll trip over my beard, fall into the street, get run over by a truck, then you'll want to take me to a hospital. No, 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 no. He, he wants you to be healthy so you can go to work. Oh, fine, fine. Never met the guy before. An old man, me, 150 years old, he wants me to go to work. What does he care? Okay, okay, don't go to work. Oh, no, he won't let me work. Wants me to starve to death. Now, look, wait a minute, please. No one wants you to starve to death. No, eat steaks, eat big, juicy steaks. How do you like that? 150 years old, not a tooth in my head? He wants me to eat steaks. 
Listen, Costello, if it'll make you happy, I'll carry you around in my arms. Now he's trying to make an invalid out of oh. <laughs> Costello, quiet. Stop all this nonsense and arguing with Alan Ladd. Give the man a chance to talk, please. Yeah, that's right, Costello. I, I merely heard that you were starting a radio station, and I came over for a job. You want a job in my station? Well, what would you do? Well, I, I always wanted to be one of those fellows who steps up to the microphone and says, uh... Men, a new shaving cream has hit the market. It is called uh, Reverso. Reverso does the way with shaving of any kind. It makes the whiskers grow inside your mouth. All you have to do is bite them off. Remember Reverso. Spelled backwards, it reads, reads, uh, Azerva, which makes it harder to remember. Say, Costello, this Alan Ladd is pretty good. Yes, not bad for a lad. Hey, listen, but I think his voice is a little... <laughs> I think his voice is a little too loud. Try it a little farther away from the microphone, Alan. What, do you mean like this? No, no, you're still too close. Step back a little farther. Well, uh, how's this, Costello? No, step back just a little farther. Oh, but uh, I'm up against the wall now. Oh, you are? Well, open up those French windows and step out on that balcony. Okay. You know something, Abbott? What? We have no balcony. <laughs> the uh, flying trapeze broke and left the daring young man as flat as a press pleat. Mm-hmm, that's flat. And it can be worse in your cigarette. If wartime flatness is spoiling your smoking, get camels for more flavor. Yes, if you're looking for a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many you smoke, get camels for more flavor. Expert blending of costlier tobaccos gives Camel cigarettes that extra flavor. It helps them to hold up, keep from going flat, no matter how many you smoke. Double-check that for yourself in your taste and throat. Your T-Zone proving ground for Camel's rich extra flavor and smooth extra mildness. And remember, Camel cigarettes stay fresh, cool smoking and slow burning, because they're packed to go around the world. C-A-M-E-L. S. Camel cigarettes. They're first in the service. They've got what it takes. Come in. Well, hello, boys. How's the radio business? Hey, Abbott, it's Alan Ladd. What are you doing back here, Alan? I thought I got rid of you when you fell off the balcony. Didn't you get hurt? No. Fortunately, I was wearing my light fall suit. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you need me around here, Costello. Your audience is crying for new blood. And in a minute, they're going to get it. <laughs> Your blood. All right, Costello. <laughs> Why don't you listen to Alan? He may have some good program ideas to improve your station. Well, certainly, Costello. I've written lots of dandy programs. Why don't we try out a few of them? For example, those all-night record shows are very popular. You fellas help me out and we'll try one right now, huh? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's listen to the music. <laughs> Good evening, record fans everywhere. This is Happy Alan Ladd bringing you the oldest all-night record program on the air, broadcasting since 1896, 24 years before radio. Now, that's enough talk. We start off our uninterrupted dance music with a recording of Mexicali Rose, played by Freddie Snitch and his Los Angeles River washouts. Here it is, Mexicali Rose. This number is being played for Fred and Mabel, Cecil and Rodney, Becky, Fanny, Pauline, the boys at Schmetnick's Pool Hall, the shut-ins at Alcatraz, and Poopsie. I know you all want to dance, so back to the music. Attention, all men over 95! Are you taking care of your tooth? Do you use pink toothpaste to suffer from white toothbrush? When you smile, does your tooth stand out like a lime or bean in a barrel of tar? <laughs> then try Dr. Fangbuster's toothpaste. The only taste toothpaste containing grit, sand, and gravel. To receive a free tube of this toothpaste, do not send in an empty tube. Just send in your tooth. <laughs> Remember Fangbuster's toothpaste for sparkling gums. And now, back to the music. <laughs> 
And I want to interrupt the music for a moment to tell you that you're dancing to Mexicali Rose. Ladies, have you tried slicko shellac on your floors? When you get up tomorrow, make this simple, simple test. Put two drops of slicko shellac on your floor and rub gently for two days. Then put two more drops on your floor and rub for three days. Then finally, two more drops and rub for two more days. And ladies, before you know it, the week is gone. And so is your floor. You have just been dancing to Mexicali Rose. Good night. Say, Alan, that was great. Yeah, they were, Alan. Got any more of those kind of programs? Well, I, I, I've got a great story for your daytime program. It's, it's all about a young girl and her problems. You want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds good, Costello. Freddie Rich, let's have the uh, theme music. <laughs> the makers of Grow Fuzz Hair Tonic present another episode in the true life story of Blossom Fink. Girl street cleaner. But first, but first, listen to what a satisfied user has to say about grow fuzz. Go ahead, Mr. Schnook. My wife was disappointed in me because I didn't have any hair on my chest. So I bought a bottle of grow fuzz. And now after one application, you should see the hair on my chest. I don't wear a shirt anymore. I wear a fascinator. <laughs> And now, back to Blossom Fink, girl street cleaner. It seems like only yesterday that poor Blossom drank potato bug spray, thinking it was orange pico. But don't worry, folks. Blossom's all right now. The police gave her the third degree and pumped it out of her. In the meantime, Blossom's friend Harvey went to the general store to meet Squire Prindle to inquire about Larry, who had received the tragic letter from Mrs. Phil Potts' nephew, Eustace, who had told her of the split-up between Bernice and Fitzroy. Now, while this was happening, the butcher's son, Herman, spied Charlie and Julius leaving Mrs. Greystone's house with Myrtle and Phoebe and quickly rang the fire alarm. Naturally, Blossom was a little confused by all this, and so am I. But as we looked in upon Blossom this morning, she and her husband are having breast breakfast. Who? <laughs> Blossom speaks. Oh, good morning, John, darling. What do you want for breakfast? Oh, dear, I I'd like some coffee. But you should have milk. But I'd much rather have a coffee, dear. But you should have milk. I'd rather have coffee. No milk. No, no, coffee. Milk. Coffee. Tune in tomorrow. Will John have milk or coffee? <laughs> and remember, friends, go to your nearest drugstore and get a bottle of Grow Fuzz hair tonic. Try it tonight. If you're not completely satisfied, please don't complain. You've only got one bottle. We got a million of them. <laughs> Costello, that's the greatest radio story I've ever heard. You're right, Abbott. Hey, look, Alan, I'll buy the whole works from you. Please okay, say. okay, Costello. That'll be uh, $10,000. Cash on the barrel head. And I'm just the barrel head that's got the money. Now, Alan, just listen to this telegram. I want to show you that I really got a lot of dough. Now, get it. Dear Luke Costello, your Uncle Oscar has just died and left you a million. Thanks for your past favors. Hey, wait a minute. Let me see that telegram. Okay. Oh, I thought so. You read it wrong. Oh, no. You haven't got a million dollars. You haven't got a cent. What do you mean? Here, I'll read this telegram for you. Dear Luke Costello, your Uncle Oscar has just died and left you. A million thanks for past favors. <laughs> Costello! Did you hear that? Did I hear that? And I just thought of something else that's wrong with that telegram. What's that? I ain't got no Uncle Oscar. Ah, get out of here. <laughs> Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight, we salute 23-year-old Marine Captain Harold Siegel of New York City, one of two Corsair pilots who attacked a formation of 40 Japanese planes. First, he shot his Zero's tail off, and then his companion, following through, with four Japs firing at him, he dove and blew up another, continuing on down to smash a third. 
Now under fire from about ten enemy fighters, Captain Siegel's plane was shot to pieces, but he stuck with it and plunged into the water. Next morning, he was rescued by a destroyer. In your honor, Marine Captain Harold Siegel, the makers of camels are sending to our Marines in the Pacific 300,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the four camel radio shows honors a Yank of the Week, sends 300,000 camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling camel caravans have thanked audiences of more than three and a half million Yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Gary Moore and Jimmy Durante. Saturday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. Monday to Blondie. And next Thursday to Abbott and Costello with our guests, Cary Grant and Don Barkley. Costello with a final word. Well, Costello, we'd better start getting ready for next week's program. You know, we're going to have uh, Cary Grant and his friend Don Barkley as our guests. Cary Grant? Mm -hmm. You mean the big movie star? That's right, Costello. You know, uh, Cary just returned from the South Pacific, where he entertained the soldiers. Yeah, I understand he made a lot of money on that trip. Oh, don't be silly. That's patriotic volunteer work. The Army doesn't pay him for that. He made the money off the jack. He had a great racket. What do you mean? At night, he'd hide behind a tree with a baseball bat. And belt the Japs over the head. How could Carry make money that way? Easy. When the Japs came to, he'd sell them a road map. Good night, folks. Good night, Good night buddy. Be sure and tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show with our special guests, Cary Grant and Don Barkley. Alan Ladd appeared tonight through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, producers of The Miracle of Morgan's Creek. And remember, get camels for more flavor. If you're looking for a cigarette that won't go flat, no matter how many you smoke, get camels for more flavor. This is Ken Niles wishing you a very pleasant good night from Hollywood. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.